I used to have a burning question in my mind. How is money made? You might also be thinking that same thing. You see it all over the internet. The manipulation, the massive inflation, governments that are trillions of dollars in debt. But how does the entire monetary system work? In this video, I'm gonna give you a brief rundown and explain to the best of my ability so that you can understand how money is made, how the financial system works, and how not to get screwed over by it. Number one on the list is central banks. In the case of the United States, it's going to be the Federal Reserve, run by none other than Papa Powell. The Federal Reserve has the authority to issue currency and regulate the monetary supply, literally meaning that they can print and distribute money any time they want. The issue with printing money, let's take for example Zimbabwe. Their government printed and screwed up their entire system so badly that they had to start printing $1 trillion bills. Sorry, $100 trillion dollar bills. So let's say, for example, there is 1 million US dollars in all of circulation all over the United States, just using round numbers to give you an example. So for $1, you can get a lot because there's only a million of them. So the value of that $1 is very, very high. Now imagine Papa Powell starts printing out his money and adds an additional $100 million into circulation. There is now 101 million US dollars circulating around the United States, thus diluting the the original 1 million, making it far less valuable. Increase of inflation. If they do that too much, we get to a point of hyperinflation like they had in Zimbabwe. The fact that they could print money anytime they want is absolutely a shocker to me. I don't understand it, but you have to understand that it's happening and it's happening every single day. Number two on my list is monetary policy. The Federal Reserve influences the entire monetary system. They influence the money supply as well as the interest rate. These two things combined make the economy go up or down. One of the tools that it uses in order to achieve this goal is that the Federal Reserve buys or sells government securities. So essentially, when the Federal Reserve buys government bonds, they're injecting money into the monetary system. They're growing the market by their influence and input into that market. The market starts going up because they're dumping hundreds of billions of dollars. As the price goes up, what they tend to do and the manipulation that most people aren't even aware of. They buy when times are bad. Then as the prices start climbing up, they and their lobbyists start telling you how good the economy is, how you should invest, everything's rainbows and sunshine. But the thing that they don't tell you is that they're about to sell because you just bought and you are their exit liquidity. Once you buy and they sell, the market starts crashing. It starts going down dramatically, making you lose thousands upon thousands of dollars and and then them and their lobbyists tell you how bad everything is, how bad the economy is, that there is a recession coming. So you start to sell off as well. Little do you know that their plan was to buy right when you sold, bringing the market back up. Just think about it for a second. What have you been seeing on the news? That we are going into another recession. This is going to be the worst financial crisis in history. Where is the market right now? It is literally at an all time high ever, period. So what did they do? They forced you to short the market, they used your sell orders as their liquidity to buy up the market. Massive manipulation and money made out of thin air. Number three on my list is fractional reserve banking. You need to understand how this works. You need to understand that if a human being goes to a bank and deposits $100, that bank uses fractional reserve banking and only is required to hold 10% of that while they loan out the other 90%. So person A comes in, $100 deposit, they keep $10, they loan out $90 to person B who just took a loan and they keep doing this over and over and over and over again. And they've been doing it for decades and decades and decades. So if you really think about it, all of the currency that exists in the world, let's just say United States dollars, for example, physically only 10% of that money actually exists as physical asset. The rest of it is digitally manipulated numbers that the banks distributes to loans and mortgages and cards car payments and loans. It's just bad, which is why so many banks fear a run on the banks. If everybody in the United States today woke up and went to the bank to withdraw all of their money, the entire world would burn to ashes in 24 hours. Banks would close, people would lose their minds, the stock market would crash to zero. It would be absolute and utter chaos. But don't ask any questions because you're a conspiracy theorist. 
So with that is number four, money created through lending. The way that I understand this is that if you go to a bank and borrow a thousand dollars, they're not going to actually just give you a thousand dollars. They will add a thousand dollar credit onto your bank account, which you can then use to buy whatever you wanted to buy. So literally they just clacked a few numbers on a keyboard and made fictional money to deposit to you, creating a liability for themselves in hope that you pay it off. If you do not, they sell this liability in big baskets of hundreds of thousands of people and sell other people's loans to major corporations, which they then accumulate interest on and try to get repayment for. All it takes is a few keyboard strokes and people are generating money out of thin air. And number five, the deposit multiplier effect. This one kind of makes me sick. So let's say I have a car or a house that I want to use as collateral for a loan from the bank. Now, what I do is I go to the bank and I say, hey, I have this house. I would like to use it as collateral. I would like to borrow $100,000. They ask for your banking information, approve your loan. They send you $100,000 of a couple of clacks on a keyboard, but you would like to deposit it into a different bank. Then you use that $100,000 that you have in that bank and you go to another bank and you say, hey, I have $100,000. I would like to use this as collateral for a loan or a down payment of a larger loan. And so you borrow $350,000. So you now have $350,000 plus $100,000 that was literally created out of thin air on the collateral of your house. So now you're almost at a half a million dollars. And so what the smart thing to do is take that, buy a piece of real estate, an asset or multiple pieces of real estate, and now use those as collateral to borrow more money, get more real estate. And as long as your real estate is generating more money and percentage per year than the percentage of the loans from the bank, you are net positive and you are a good real estate business. What most people do is they borrow that money to pay for a wedding, go on vacation, buy a car they can't afford, buy the house they can't afford, and then they get into this spiraling network of debt and they just wake up and they're $2.7 million in debt and they don't know how to get out. Money is printed on machines, injected into the markets to manipulate us, to take our money, to add to their pocket. Money is also created by a couple of clicks on a keyboard. If you would like me to make a more in-depth video about each one of these individually, I can easily, easily make a one hour video on each one of these full documentary style, how the system works. If you'd like to see something like that, let me know in the comments section down below.